you would like to um, take your meditation posture, um, the, the posture is um, is one in which we we seek to find a balance between effort and relaxation. So the effort is put into the, the spine, the head, um, to uh, keep them straight, but not um, uh, overly, overly straight, overly stressed. Um, but once the, the, the spine is straight, the, the head is straight, then the rest of the body can um, be relaxed. So you have this um, initial teaching um, of the, the balance between effort and relaxation, which we, we carry through in every area of our, our practice and um, translates also from the, the physical dimension to the, to the mental dimension. So the, um, whatever meditation object that we are using, we are at heart doing, um, trying to do four things and applying we call the four right efforts. Um, so those um, require us to establish a relationship with our meditation object in such a way that distracted thoughts and hindrances um, will not um, hijack our mind or draw us away from our meditation. Now, as that's a very difficult thing to do, uh, we will usually need to put forth the second kind of effort, which is to reestablish attention when uh, we become distracted by thoughts of the past, the future, and so on. Now, as the meditation progresses, then more and more the emphasis shifts to introducing into the mind, establishing wholesome mental states that uh, were not previously there, in particular mindfulness and clear comprehension. And as those mental states become stronger, um, then we are learning how to nurture those positive mental states and how to develop them further. So we can look on, on the meditation practice um, as a time in which we, we set up a, a particular um, supportive environment in which we can give full attention to these four elements of right effort. Learning how to take care of the mind to prevent the unwholesome mental states that have not yet arisen from arising from dealing wisely and effectively with unwholesome mental states that do arise in establishing wholesome mental states that have not yet arisen and in cultivating and nurturing and further developing those wholesome states that have developed, have, have arisen. So if we are meditating on, on the breath, this is our challenge. And how do we create the optimum relationship between the mind and the breath? How can we 
create that bond between the mind and the object such that we are more interested. We, we have um, more commitment to that relationship than to any other thought or perception. So the more that we enjoy and appreciate the meditation, then the easier it is um, to protect the mind against those mental states that will undermine it. So the, the quality of, of chanda and interest, enthusiasm, commitment is most important of the various prerequisites for, uh, for meditation. And at the beginning of a meditation session, um, it's good to just check on that level of interest. And if, there are, uh, if it's lacking, then it's worth just spending a minute or two um, just revising and um, reflecting on the suffering that you've experienced in your life, experience the suffering you've created for others um, through a lack of mental training, um, through the presence of defilements in your mind, and then the, the benefits of abandoning defilements and we can recollect, turn our mind to, to great teachers that we've been fortunate enough to meet or perhaps to listen to or to, to read um, and uh, to, to see how wonderful it would be to, to emulate them and to realize what they've realized, that freedom from defilement. So it is in, in, in essence, revision of, of the noble truths that as long as there's suffering in the mind, uh, as long as there is defilement in the mind, there'll be suffering, but that the end of suffering is possible um, and attainable through following the Buddhist teachings. And that meditation practice um, is when we uh, create the conditions in which we are wholeheartedly um, devoting ourselves to the practice of the Eightfold Path. And without meditation practice, then we will never have sufficient mental power and clarity and stability uh, to um, free ourselves of suffering and its causes. So that's perhaps a, a little long-winded explanation, but you can um, devise your own shorthand, shortcut um, reminder at the beginning of a meditation just to orient the mind and to give the mind that uh, enthusiasm and interest. Now, meditating on the breath um, can be it can be practiced in in a number of, of different ways, and if you are not a um, and a very experienced meditator, then it's um, often a good idea to um, start off with a much more general awareness of the breath um, throughout the body. And when mindfulness has been established and there is a, um, an unforced and, um, and relaxed but focused awareness of the breath, then to 
uh, narrow that focus to one particular point in the body, such as the, the tip of the nose or the area around the upper lip, wherever the sensation of the breath is most clear. So one way of, of um, establishing a more general awareness of the breath is to divide the body into to four areas. Uh, the first area being the, um, the head, the face, the neck. Then the second area being the shoulders, the arms, the hands, fingers. The third area, the torso. And the fourth area, um, the body from the hips down to the, the feet, toes. And so for a few breaths, um, just aware of all the sensations that appear naturally as we breathe in, as we breathe out, in the area of the head, the face, and the neck. And then we're aware of the sensations arising, passing away in the shoulders, the arms, the wrists, the hands, the fingers. Not visualizing those parts of the body or not trying to create any feelings, but just aware of whatever is manifesting in the present moment in that particular area. Then the sensations in the, the torso you sense the, the expansion and contraction, um, which corresponds with the in-breath and the out-breath is very clear. The feeling in the, in the spine, in the abdomen, just uh, any sensation that is present, that appears on the inhalation, any that appears on the exhalation, we simply note it. So we're establishing um, that sense of equanimity and um, a clear awareness of whatever is arising without reacting towards it. And the fourth area of the body from the hips downwards, the, um, the bottom, the area of the body, which is um, in contact with the floor or with the seat, the, the thighs, the knees, the calves, the ankles, the feet, the toes, it's that whole area, any sensation that appears as we breathe in, any sensation that appears as we breathe out, simply recognizing it, being aware of it. And then the fifth step is to be aware of the whole body from the top of the head to the toes. As we breathe in, as we breathe out, so this is a very um, relaxed, broad, um, gentle introduction to breath meditation. Just feeling the whole body, just being aware 
of whatever sensation arises at whatever part in the body without choosing. As we breathe in, as we breathe out. That's a, like a warm up exercise. And we can continue that for another round or two rounds if we wish. Or we can now focus our attention on one particular point in the body um, in which we can observe the breath in a more refined, subtle way. So the most um, popular, effective area tends to be either within the nostrils or at the tip of the nose or in the area around the upper lip. And we choose a spot in which the, the breath can um, be experienced very easily and pleasantly. And some meditators um, will prefer to be aware of the, the breath in the, in the throat or in the chest area or the abdomen. And there's no um, right or wrong here. It's choosing um, one particular area to or one particular point or spot to focus upon. So the two main um, tools or virtues that we are employing here, mindfulness and clear comprehension. So mindfulness means simply not forgetting what you're uh, what you're doing. Clear comprehension is, is a form of wisdom. It's a very uh, mild or preliminary um, form of wisdom. And it's what keeps track of the mindfulness. Um, it's, it's clear comprehension that tells us we're, uh, we're putting too much effort in and not enough relaxation. And we're getting kind of tight and maybe the, the breathing becomes unnatural or forced. Or if we become uh, too relaxed, then we get sleepy. If the mind wanders, it's clear comprehension that tells us oh, we've, we're thinking about something other than what we uh, intended to um, devote ourselves to. So clear comprehension is, is kind of like a, a quality control. It keeps an eye on, on mindfulness. Um, and it's that um, sense of wakefulness and alertness. And it's absolutely key to any meditation technique. Once you start to lose that sense of alertness and wakefulness, clarity of mind, um, then um, the hindrances are, are, are going to um, envelop the mind, particularly um, the sloth and torpor. And, and sloth and torpor is not necessarily um, falling asleep and nodding, but it's uh, in its more subtle manifestation can be uh, like a stiffness of the mind. So the, when there is a balance between mindfulness, clear comprehension, right effort, there is a, a flexibility and a brightness to the mind. If it, the mind is going in a kind of blurry um, state, then that's a sign that uh, uh, losing the, the path and need to put more energy and effort into 
into the meditation. 